Back during your childhood, it really was the simple things that made your day. Whether it be finding a quarter on the sidewalk, getting to stay up 15 minutes past your bedtime, or the topic of today's video, getting a fast food toy. For the past few decades, toys have riddled the grease-infested walls of your local Burger King, Sonic, and of course, McDonald's. Beginning all the way back in 1979, the Happy Meal truly became a cultural staple. Your parents would get some stupid healthy thing, and the kids would get a four-piece chicken nugget with a randomly assigned toy, from whatever promotion may be going on. Whether it be for a movie, video game, or some other third thing, it would always be a highlight of any youngling's dining experience. And I'm sure all of you watching can probably echo the same opinion, because they've been doing this for so long, the Happy Meal is really a staple of pretty much anybody's childhood nowadays. So I thought, let's go through some of the most iconic and nostalgic promotions and toys McDonald's ever had to offer. And I'm gonna say this right now, this is mainly my personal experience, so if there's some random promotion I didn't mention from 2015 that was your spiritual awakening, I deeply apologize to 7 year old you. But let's just hop right in. I'm not really going in any order, I'm just gonna be listing off ones that come to mind. So I guess let's start with the iconic and amazing Spider-Man 2. Now this promotion was simply one of the most iconic for anybody my age, given how absolutely everywhere it was. If you're younger or you weren't there for the release of Tasm 2, the marketing for this movie was insane. Quite literally anything and everything you can think of was having this movie plastered on it for promoting its release. And of course, this made for one of the biggest Happy Meal lines of its time. Starting out, we had things like standard figures of Electro and Spider-Man, which would both light up upon pressing a button on their backs. And for some reason, Peter's eyes would light up red. Bro predated the instant kill scene by over half a decade. However, beyond these, it gets pretty weird, since instead of making other characters like maybe Rhino or the Harry Goblin thing, they made other stuff, like a top that has Spider-Man on it, a little wind-up figure of a real spider for some reason. Just really makes you hungry, doesn't it? A Spider-Man knockoff of a Hot Wheel, a little DIY journal with stickers and activities and stuff, an admittedly pretty cool Spider-Man mask, and this tin which included four separate trading cards inside. This one's special though, because I sh** you not, there is an episode of Cops where a guy gets busted carrying his plant inside this exact tin. I'm not even joking. This is me while editing, and apparently they had a press event where they had the kid who wore the Spider-Man costume in the film appear, which is awesome. But after all that, there's of course the second half of this promotion. As instead of there just being another toy for the girls' side, they for some reason made the girls' toys also Amazing Spider-Man 2, which included such extravagant things as a watch, a bracelet, a headband, a comb. Yeah, I don't really understand what the deal was here, but like I said, this movie's marketing was literally everywhere, so I understand why they did it. But most importantly, the girl side of this promotion gave us Pink Spider-Man, which officially made the Big Bad Frozen Spider-Man YouTube event canon. But anyway, there's a lot of other toys from other countries for this promotion, but for pretty much everything in this video, I'm gonna be mainly talking about the American stuff, but I thought I should mention it anyway. Next up though, I wanna do something that's sort of its own category, being the many, many Star Wars toys from the late 2000s and early 2010s. So there's a lot to go over, so firstly, let's just talk about these infamous ones. As we know, these are supposed to emulate a character driving slash poking their head out of some sort of vehicle from the Star Wars universe, but in reality, it just looks like one of those weird Airheads commercials. They are nostalgic and have a bobblehead function, plus the sheer amount of them in this set, spanning all the way from the original trilogy to the prequel slash Clone Wars era, and it has pretty much every main character you can ever think of from the time. And while the heads are obviously goofy looking and are impossible to take seriously, the sculpting on them is shockingly well done, and the paint job isn't even that bad. These are truly an odd case. But then we've got this set which has four characters as keychains, as well as these four ships as button launchers. The keychains are pretty neat, and despite the fact they are pretty chonky, they actually have the ability to split in half so you can put stuff inside. And I distinctly remember having this R2-D2 and lodging a bunch of fruit snacks inside of it, making it gross and disgusting for the ends of time. And for what it's worth, these launcher toys honestly have a decent amount of sculpting work on them, and are surprisingly well done for what they are. But yeah, overall, pretty nice promotion. Oh my god, somebody on eBay is selling the display module paired up with this and the iCarly promotion it was running with for $15. You know, screw it, I'm gonna buy this. I bought it. I own it. Then we've got this set of tech deck inspired fingerboards as they call them. These obviously aren't as high quality as an actual tech deck, but how exactly are you supposed to get a Saz Ventress on an actual officially licensed tech deck? These are really neat and I appreciate how the wheels and backgrounds are all these vibrant colors. They contrast well when you have multiple. And these are all based off the Clone Wars as you can tell. But yeah, these are goaded as hell. But then finally for Star Wars, we have in my opinion the best set they ever made, which I remember very fondly being another Clone Wars inspired set. However, the toys here are way cooler than they usually are. Firstly, you had not one, not two, but three different colors of lightsaber, which all had different hilts and had different functions, and they all had the ability to light up. Then we had this admittedly not as cool C-3PO bobble waist thing, 
which you can place down on your dashboard or something, and it'll do his iconic waist swivel. However, then you had a completely wind-up ATTE, which was just awesome, and was fully capable of walking on its own. This one's fire. And finally, we have what is quite possibly the coolest McDonald's toy that has ever been released. This Yoda, which had a movable arm, which upon being moved up, would use the power of magnets to move up this disc thing inside a tube. I don't know what the hell they were smoking when they made this, but dear God, let them cook. This is easily the coolest play function a McDonald's toy has ever had. And I'm sure thousands of kids across the country were just flabbergasted this was even possible. I know I sure was. I thought it was straight up black magic or something. Either way though, this is one of the coolest toys I've ever seen. I will say though, this whole promotion was even bigger in Europe though. And they had stuff like R2-D2 as well as Count Dooku's lightsaber. What is this sh**? Now, after coming out of that utter peak, let's talk about the complete and polar opposite. Let's talk about this bullshit. I swear to God, I do not know what McDonald's was thinking with this. But in 2013, McDonald's thought instead of just letting kids be kids and giving them like a fucking bumblebee toy or something, they said, let's give children books as toys. And they pushed this hard. If you were a kid back then, you would have known that every single kid's channel on TV had this stupid ass goat on it. They were trying to make this kid and his stupid fucking goat the next mascot of the corporation or something. But anyway, there were four different books you could be subjected to. Firstly, there was The Goat Who Ate Everything, which as you could assume, the plot consists of a boy trying to get his goat to stop being a dickhead and eating everything. Then there's Deanna the Dinosaur's Big Dreams, which features this iconic dinosaur and this weird fetish she has to grow really tall or something, culminating at the end where you have to unfold the whole page and show how big she got. HA HA HA! Then there's this one about ants being ants and like hating being ants and something, I don't care. And then there's Dodie, the Dodo, Dur 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 Dur! All of these are stupid and I hate them all equally. And literally the only one with any redeeming factor is the goat one, because there's a whole bite taken out of the whole book's corner. That's funny! But yeah, these things don't even deserve the recognition of toys. Because these are not toys, these are torture weapons designed for the youth. I genuinely remember boycotting McDonald's when these came out. Like, I'm not even joking, my 8 year old brain just didn't even want to eat at McDonald's. Because I was genuinely insulted that they were trying to give me this instead of a toy. Genuinely disgraceful. But now, after that, let's go on to something much more interesting. Being the wide array of Pokemon toys that were released over the years. Now the first ever line these had was for black and white. And not gonna lie, this is probably one of the best toy rubrics McDonald's has ever had. As instead of giving us some stupid vanilla play feature, that makes a toy is kind of hard to play with since they're in some predetermined pose. They just gave us very simple vanilla figures, usually with some sort of extremely simple play feature. And then as a bonus, you got an exclusive Pokemon card to go with. Well, exclusive may not be the right word since it was literally just a reprint of some common card from the most recent set. Simply turned holographic with a neat little confetti pattern. Though each promotion has them listed on their own separate set, which I find pretty funny. And it was still greatly appreciated. But anyway, this set had a perfect selection, being Pikachu, the three Unova starters, the two box legendaries, and two fan favorite Pokemon from the generation, being Zora and Zoark. There's not even too much to say about these, other than the fact that they're just perfect everything, down to the last minute detail. So they kept it going with the next line a year later, where we got a different Pikachu, as well as the middle evolutions for the three starters, plus Axew and Woobat, with the same concept of simplistic toys, along with a card working great here too. So as you could assume, for the next promotion a year later, they completely abandoned this and decided to do something completely different. Now, considering that this is based off of Pokemon X and Y, I am not morally allowed to talk ill of it, but these were, uh... They were portable launcher thingies that would have different colors of pop-out Pokemon on the inside. Not a figure or anything, just a little acrylic standout that would pop up right after you launch it from a flat Pokeball on a table or something. And you would select one or three symbols to have some rock, paper, scissors copy game that Billy and Tommy would play once at McDonald's when they were eating and never again. I distinctly remember these not really firing that well, and the designs here are just not very good. Like, they had the perfect opportunity to give these a major redemption factor, where they could have made them all the different Pokeballs you can get in the game, or maybe something like Mega Stones, I don't know. But no, they're just randomly recolored Pokeballs that don't exist. As well, they put the Kanto starters and Mewtwo in here, which I understand why since they're in the game. But come on, why didn't you make them the Mega Evolutions? That would have been perfect, what's wrong with you? There's even two slots that are taken up by Pancham and Helioptile, that they could have used for the other two Megas for Mewtwo and Charizard. Oh yeah, I forgot, little Billy hates Mega Mewtwo Y and really wanted f***ing Pancham. But anyway, you get the idea. Though it is kind of hard to be mad though, because the next set would be ungodly amazing. There will never be a McDonald's toy set I am more nostalgic over than the Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire promotion in 2015. 
I think they realized just how bad they messed up, so they took every precaution to make this set the best it could possibly be. You had both Groudon and Kyogre in their primal forms, as well as goddamn Rayquaza in a Happy Meal box, plus Megalatios, as well as freaking Hoopa. Freaking Hoopa! As well as the new Pikachu, which had undoubtedly the coolest play feature out of any Pokemon toy, being the fact that when you rolled him along the wheels he had, you could see sparks coming from the inside of his tail. That was so awesome. And finally, Lugia and Wobbuffet for good measure. A perfect selection with absolutely amazing execution. With things like Primal Kyogre being see-through and translucent in a few areas, as well as handling things like Hoopa's arms which are usually detached and levitating, with glittery translucent plastic. But yeah, I remember this promotion doing numbers back in the day. Literally everybody back in 5th grade had to have at least one of these toys. And if you watched my videos when I had like negative 4 subscribers, doing nothing but Pokemon card openings back in the XY era, you would know that I prominently had the Groudon from this promotion, displayed in the background of nearly all of my old videos. And as well I have a really funny story about the Mega Latios toy, being the fact that I found it next to a trash can completely sealed in its package, as I was walking into a Toys R Us back in 2015. I don't know how the hell it got there, but one man's trash is another man's Mega Latios toy. After that though, there's a few other similar promotions for the next few years, with stuff like Sun and Moon and the Year of Legendary Pokemon, which were all really great, but nothing can compare to this one. And if you're ever bored, try looking up some of the other promotions McDonald's from other countries had for Pokemon, because some of this stuff is absolutely crazy. And like, apparently a few years ago in Asia, they had a shiny Magikarp toy. Like, what the hell, I want that! But either way, anything's better than those god-awful promotions they have now. Where it's just a little activity pack and a crappy pack of five Pokemon cards that Gingers in Canada start public fights about. Hey, Chef Pee it's a Pokemon toy! I don't care, just let me sleep, bastard! Next up, though, how can I talk about McDonald's toys without talking about the pails? I see a lot of mixed opinions on these. Pretty much everybody would get these for the first time, thinking there'd be some awesome, really cool, epic Halloween toy inside, and then realizing that the pail is the toy. But after that, I don't know, I think these are pretty cool. <laughs> they went nine years from 2001 to 2010 without releasing any of them, but then came back with Mr. Potato Head, and then we got a mix of generic, unlicensed Halloween characters, as well as things like Scooby-Doo, Minions, Peanuts, The Book of Life. Mm-hmm. And easily the most superior out of all of them, the Monster High slash Angry Birds Star Wars promotion. Words cannot describe how hyped these were. And I think we all know that Darth Piggy's existence cannot be summed up into a mere sentence, so I'll leave it here. Oh yeah, and also I'm gonna be completely real, the artwork on the Monster High ones kinda slaps. Cough, cough, 2D art is better than 3D, cough, cough, ah, choo. After that though, I think it's time for us to go into more specific slash one-off promotions, as opposed to full-on categories or franchises. So I think let's firstly start out with one of my personal favorites, Transformers Prime, baby! There were two separate promotions, firstly this one in 2012, which was a tad mid considering it was just the vehicle forms. However, I have this Bumblebee with me right now, and I will hold it up to the microphone right now and press the button so we all know what it sounds like. That was epic. However, the infinitely superior line came in 2013, where we had full-on robot modes of the characters, and these were pretty epic. You had three Autobots and three Decepticons, and they all were surprisingly well done for what they are. I mean, obviously the paint's not great, but these are all in some really nice dynamic poses that have some simple play features, and plus this set had Starscream in it. I, I need not say more. After those, we've got to talk about the Adventure Time promotion, which was pretty simple and straightforward, but still really nice. You had two separate Fins and Jakes with wildly different play features, as well as Beemo and Ice King, and I gotta say, this Beemo was always goaded, since his face was lenticular and would shift between him doing several different faces, as well as a lost signal screen. Really neat. I distinctly remember being at this really big McDonald's, high up in the play place and I saw that some kid dropped his fin all the way down into some chasm that wasn't accessible, and I was just thinking, well, good time not to be that kid. Moving on, given how I started with the Tasm 2 promotion, I think it's only fair to talk about some other Marvel ones, like for example this set which was simply titled Marvel Heroes. All these were extremely good representations of the characters, and they all had really good play features, like the Hulk smashing his fist together, Human Torch lighting up, Wolverine having his claws retract, and nowadays in a time where we put up with this for our Marvel McDonald's toys, these are just absolute godsends. And another really good set was this particular Spider-Man one, which had extremely nice character choices, with more villains this time around and some really nice play features for the characters, like Venom who could shoot water out of his mouth or Spider-Man being able to suction cup onto surfaces. I mean, this figure just deserves an award, what else do I need to say? Then there's the iconic Mario Kart 8 promotion, which I distinctly remember going out of my way to make sure I got every single one of these, and it was really neat because these were actually carts from the game, and some of these would have the standard wheels while others would have the anti-gravity ones, and of course if you were a real one, you scored the Mario cap. 
And don't you give me that 2022 re-release with Toadette bullcrap, that's horseradish. Then of course is one of the strangest releases in McDonald's history. The Madam Alexander Madam Web- I said Madam Web, Jesus Christ. The Madam Alexander Wizard of Oz promotion. I mean, I get girls like dolls and all, but I don't understand why they would want these weird, creepy, realistic baby faces. There's a reason things like Monster High was really popular around this time, but this just ain't it. This was paired up with a Lego Batman set, and I feel bad for all the little girls who got the Wicked Witch of the West and had to watch their brother play with Mr. Freeze. Then, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the Despicable Me 2 set, which featured several different minions, and I gotta say, this one's probably one of the most distributed ones ever, because it seems like literally everybody ever, literally ever had these. I mean, the minions were extremely popular at the time, so it makes sense. And there were all kinds of minions doing some epic shenanigans, as well as things like the scary purple minions. Though without a doubt, one of the best ones was Stuart with the fart gun, which was quite frankly the most ingenious design man has ever forged. Then there's the Spongebob promotion from 2012, which featured Spongebob and a few other characters doing some various hobbies and sports. This one was, of course, mainly just Spongebob, but some of these were really cool though. Like this one, you could have Spongebob roll down, which gave me endless entertainment as a child, and some of them even had some pretty good deep cuts, like Spongebob with the marshmallow dumbbell, or Gary from the Great Snail Race, pretty epic. Then there's, of course, the iconic Lego Movie Cups. Now, despite the fact we didn't get real toys for the master class of cinema that is the Lego Movie, these were still everywhere and were honestly really great. They were all lenticular and had all kinds of different renders that would shift upon being turned. And plus, they'd have one side be an image of the character, and the other image would be the character in action. Way cooler than people would assume, TBH. So I think that's all the specific ones I wanted to mention. However, we're not done yet, as there's one more category I want to bring up. And that would be every one of the toy promotions that serve to promote some random ass movies release. And since there's so many of these, I thought let's just have a rapid fire section. So without any further ado, Madagascar, Escape to Africa, Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted, Hotel for Dogs, End at the Museum, Battle for the Smithsonian, Titan's Continental Drift, Astro Boy, Avatar, Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Squeakle, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Chipwreck, The Penguins of Madagascar, Battle Train of Dragons, Trek Forever After, Megamind, Bumblebee, Rio, The Smurfs, 1 and 2, Puss in Boots, Rise of the Guardians, Hotel Transylvania, 1 and 2, The Croods, Epic, and finally... Mr. And I think that's about it. There's my look at the most nostalgic Happy Meal toys on the face of the planet. Again, if there's any that I missed or didn't bring up, I deeply apologize to 7 year old you, but I hope you found this entertaining nonetheless. This one was a blast to make since I got to literally just relive my grease infested childhood. And really, what other way is there to live? If you enjoyed watching, please consider hitting that like or subscribe button. It really does help the channel a lot and allows me to make videos like this more often. And if you have any other nostalgic things you want me to talk about, leave it in the comments below. And I mean, hey, this is only the official stuff. What about that one guy who put his mixtape in the Happy Meal? But anyway, subscribe right now or I will whack you with my Lord Business Lenticular Cup.